Hey guys, Mark here. Welcome back. Uh, been away for a little bit, just busy um, testing my boat and getting it ready to go racing in the States, hopefully soon. Pretty excited about that. It's coming along really, really good. Um, I haven't been focusing too much effort here and I, I apologize for that, but uh, just time hasn't permitted. But anyways, back on track here tonight. I'm going to put a little video together about uh, kind of wiring your boat, your race boat, maybe your performance boat on a budget. Um, I get asked a lot of questions and uh, people looking for pointers and that sort of thing. So I thought I'd just kind of put a little something together. I'm gonna to go through different connectors, different styles of wire and and, um, and grade of wire, some of the tools that you need, and kind of actually gonna show you guys how you can do a professional job on a budget. Um, this tooling is very, very expensive. The, the, the product is very ex expensive, and I'm gonna kind of show you the way that you can shortcut some of those areas still come up with a very good reliable safe job and save yourself a little bit of money so anyways follow along please remember to hit that like subscribe button it's very important on how this all works so thank you enjoy okay guys so I'm gonna try and break this up keep it kind of simple I'm gonna go look over some connectors some different connectors sort of good better best uh, some wire choices and some tooling shrink wrap and that sort of thing and then i'm gonna then i'm gonna go back and show you where you guys can eliminate the expensive tooling eliminate the expensive connectors and whatnot get a professional job on a budget so first of all let's start with connectors this is your standard insulated department store connector my opinion is in no way should you ever use one of these and the reason that I say that is not even that they don't connect together okay and everything's fine. It's just because you're crimping over the insulation, you, I, you, can't, you can't test your crimp. You can't get a good crimp. I don't think you can anyways. So um, if you need to keep the budget low and you need to use something like that, if you go to this sort of insulated style with this clear plastic, at least you can visually see your crimp afterwards. They're okay but I'll show you a better idea. I buy them from, I buy them through wiring sources online, but you can get these at parts sources. So say your female male connectors like this, non-insulated. And um, I'm gonna show you a little trick on how we insulate them here to, um, to make them look nice and, uh, and, and be safe and, and, and be able to make sure that you have a good crimp. We're gonna come back to that in a second. Next, weather pack connectors. That's where you've got a, a, a pin, your pin that's crimped to your wire uh, in two different places. You're crimped onto the lead and then onto the insulation. Uh, it's installed through the backside of the connector with a weatherproof connection or, or plug, I should say. Um, I like these, I'm a big fan of these. GM used these for years, weather pack. Uh, Danny Spears and I were just talking about this the other day, and the, the one thing that I really like about these compared to, say, Deutsch, which is your next step up, which is your super high-end connectors, is you can you could use two smaller gauge wires in one pin in a terminal and have them break out where you can't really do that with a Deutsch connector, and that makes them a nice, clean, a nice, clean job. The other cool thing with these is you could buy one set of crimpers, um, like a Delphi style crimper that you're that you'll use throughout your project for these that works really well and they're relatively inexpensive. We're going to come back to those two. Lastly, Deutsch connectors, which is basically your premium auto sport connector. Deutsch come in three. Well, they come in a bunch of ratings, but in the motorsports, you're going to have what would be your DT or your DTM series which is your mini one, and I think they're good for about six amps continuous. DT, which is your kind of medium current, uh, I think maybe 13 amps continuous or something like that. Uh, and then your DTP, where they're good for upwards of 20 plus 25 continuous amps. So, Deutsch connectors, a little bit complex, but obviously very, very weatherproof, very sealed. And, this is where I'm going to show you a little trick here right now to save some money. The most expensive part about a Deutsch connector is not the connector itself, it's the tooling to properly crimp them. Um, these DMC crimpers that I use are about 700 bucks. There is a cheaper version of them that you can buy 
the problem with these is is the DMC ones have a, a depth gauge in them to allow you a number 16 connector. You set the number 16, you can't over crimp it and split it. With these, you can. So a lot of guys in the auto sports industry say, stay away from Deutsch connectors, unless you're gonna invest in the tooling. These aren't garbage. And, and I've used these, don't get me wrong, but I've broke a lot of them too, so I try not to. But the cool thing is, you can, buy an open barrel pin for a Deutsch connector that you can use your your um, your Delphi style crimpers, which allows you to, to still use the, the Deutsch connector. This style pin, nice clean job without spending $700 and $600, whatever pin. So, so th this would be my choice, these two. I would like to stay away from this stuff Weatherpack, Deutsch, if you can, because they seal up really nice. They make a nice, neat job. Deutsch, again, open or closed barrel Deutsch, only if you have good tooling. If not, open barrel, which is perfectly fine. At least you need some Delphi, but I mean, you don't need super high. The next thing, I, I want to talk, I want to touch on these. I don't even know what the name of these are. They're like a solder seal. These are inexpensive, and I'm a big fucking fan of these. I like these. You've heard me talk in the past about not liking solder in auto sports, and I really don't, and I especially don't like it at a connector joint because it can it gets brittle and breaks. In a place where you have to splice two wires together in a harness, these, the wires go in, you heat up, the solder melts in the center and flows in. These rings seal, and these actually seal up really good. I, I, I've used these with big success. So I, I have no problem with these. They're relatively inexpensive. Um, you also can cover them with like a shrink wrap after if you like, just to, I don't know, to extra seal them up. Um, but, but, but I like these. Don't be afraid to use these. These and these stay away from either non-insulated connectors, Deutsch, Deutsch connectors, um, weather pack connectors do the job. Now, we're gonna get to closed barrel and open barrel connectors to join two wires together. And I'm gonna do a little demo here, for example. Okay, so back to open barrel, closed barrel, splice style connectors. This is a, your standard closed barrel. Uh, again, different gauge sizes for wire and whatnot. Um, basically just sink that in in there i would only i would cut back less for so there's less insulation exposed or cut back but basically the two join but they butt up in the center and you're relying on your crimp across both of those <clears throat> to seal it i don't really like these connectors they have their place but i don't really i would rather see an open barrel brass connector like that one word of advice avoid the amazon cheap ones they're very very thin and they they split so buy them through like a you know wire supply store or um, you know auto sports store or something like that so but they make a really nice job basically because you are laying the two wires over top of each other like so you use your same delphi crimpers that we use for so many other different jobs again these are inexpensive and one set is going to work for so many different things so we're going to just kind of sink the connector into there you can hear it snap into place. What I would do is probably go down one size smaller, drive it home, do your strain test, and I'm pulling as hard as I can and that will not pull apart. That basically cold welds the wire together. It makes a nice tight, small joint. Slide your shrink wrap over top, shrink it, beautiful. The other nice thing is you can lay three wires in here, four wires. These these open barrel crimpers are, or open barrel terminals are so, so much nicer than these. Again, they have their place. Some of the bigger ones aren't too awful bad. You use a bigger set of crimpers like these ones. You can sink them in, they're okay. I, I'm not a big fan, but whatever. Yeah. So I'm gonna touch back on these non-insulated uh, male, female, spade connectors, ring terminals, it's all the same, doesn't really matter. You can buy them at your auto parts store in a little box of 10 or something like that, a connector. Really, really nice, because again, you can crimp them with proper crimpers, 
um, and then you can you can strain you know strain test them a lot easier than you can uh, with it with an, an insulated type of terminal. And they look neater too. I'm going to show you how you can shrink wrap them to seal them all up and make them nice. So, anyways, you just very very simple. Slide together like so. Uh, you're again a Delphi crimper of some sort. You can just sink them in. Drive it home. You can see the indent in and that will not pull apart. Now, you're gonna slide a piece of non-adhesive lined shrink wrap up there. You could probably use an adhesive lined one in the lower part, but you basically you wanna keep some glue out of the connector because then it's not gonna connect on. And just take your heat gun. You're gonna sink that in. Short. And just take a little, big, little bit bigger. Again, this one, it's important to know that it's not adhesive lined. Slide it over the connector till it butt touches. Sink it in. <laughs> then you've made yourself an insulated terminal that's strong, that's not gonna come apart, it's not gonna short because it's protected, and it looks a little nicer too. So I like to do that with, with the relays too, is, you know, relays always come with a pigtail and Usually it has five leads in the pigtail. You're usually using four, one dangling away. Then you're butt connecting them six inches away and they look like shit. So I, I just make my terminals just like this. At the relay, when the relay's in place, you bring your, your bundle up to it, cut to the length, and it makes a nice insulated push on. Sure, it all doesn't come off as one, but who cares? It, it, and then you can, you, know, you can run your wires nice and, 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 and tie them together nice and that sort of thing. It just makes for a nice neat job. So. Anyways, that's my take on that. I um, I like to, I, like I say, I like to avoid these. I do avoid these. I mean, these are fine to keep in a toolbox for the race or something. You have something go wrong, you gotta do a quick fix. Okay, so be it. But anyways, other than that, garbage. Now, conductors, wire. I'm gonna make a little bit of a bold statement here, but I was told that you need to run tinned wire in a marine application. And I always thought that that was kind of odd because sure, it's, it's wet, but cars live in a lot wetter environment than a boat does when you think about it. I mean, we drive them through salt and we drive them through sleet and we drive them through snow and we drive them through all the shit and there's no tinned wires in, in a car. Marine application, I get it, laying down in the bill, Jerry, there's condensation, the cover stays on it and that sort of thing. Okay, that's fine. I don't have anything against tin wire. I think it's great. But for the haters that are gonna, or the naysayers that are gonna say, oh fuck, you have to run tin wire. Well, this is part of a factory mercury harness that I cut out of a car or out of a boat the other day. non tin wire. So mercury isn't using it. Anyways, don't get all bent about that. Avoid your Princess Auto tight spooled wire it's it's not a fine strand wire i don't know what the hell it is the plastic protective coating on it is thick and ugly and terrible so if you go to an auto parts store buy like a what they would call a txl level wire minimum it's got a flexible jacket a fairly a fairly a thinner jacket flexible jacket it's a finer strand it's just a good wire it's not super high end well let's face it in these boats we're not sending signals and whatnot through um they're pretty archaic really so I think anything from a TXL level or better. We, uh, some of the boats I wire, we use like Rob Twible's boat, other ones we used all Tefsel because he wanted the best. Long and short is buy the best stuff that you can buy. Buy the best connectors that you can buy. Buy the best wire that you're gonna buy. It's gonna make a nicer job in the end. It's gonna make a more reliable job. It's gonna last longer, but do you need to have it? No, if you can't afford it, should you not wire your boat? No, that's all bullshit. Just buy the best stuff that you can buy. The nice thing when you do get a quality sort of a marine grade or a nice tin wire, they have a, it has a nice thin flexible jacket as you can see. Makes it really nice for doing the nice routing and your nice bends and that sort of stuff. So again, coming back to wire, buy the best you can buy. Stay away from Princess Auto. Buy, like I say, a T, what they would call a TXL or even a GXL level or better. If you can't find it, call me, I can get it. We, I have the mercury factory colors and I keep here in stock. Um, 
and, and I mean, there's other places. I get, I can send you, I can show you where you need to go to get it. So, anyways, we can come back to that. Shrink tube. You're gonna hear me talk a lot about shrink tube, and if you watch my videos, you hear me talk a lot about DR25, or I'm sorry, DR20 and um, Raychem uh, level of shrink tube and whatnot. Raychem is just a brand name. It's very, very good. Um, it's just DR25, sorry. Get confused with bolts, uh, DR20. Um, anyways, it's very good quality, uh, uh, protective coating, um, and I use it here, but I usually order it in specific because it's quite expensive, but I do keep m hundreds of feet of other types. So there's kind of two that you're gonna use. You're gonna use a, what they call a two to one wall, meaning that it shrinks two to one, <clears throat> and a non-adhesive lined for applications like I just showed you. Uh, then you're going to use a three to one adhesive lined, a little bit thicker, um, I, I like to use this anywhere I can because it adds another strain relief to it. Uh, again, if you're, you know, in, a, in, a, in an open barrel, or not an open barrel connector, but a terminal connector or something like that, where you can't, you can't get glue in there, you can't, but otherwise it, uh, it makes for a nice job. Again, no need to spend a ton of money. This you can buy at Princess Auto if you need to. You can get to, they, they have all different sizes, it's inexpensive. They do have adhesive line, non-adhesive line. So. Anyways, go that way if that's what you need. Other than that, you can buy it at, at a parts store. Probably a little bit better quality. You can get whatever you want. Protective shielding for wiring. There's a couple different styles. I like this stuff. It's like a thin nylon-based stuff. It's super flexible, as you can see. I'll oftentimes pull it over a harness to protect the harness. Even slide a piece of shrink tube over the end of it at the end and shrink it down to seal it all up. Works really, really nice. Some people like to use the split barrel stuff because then you can apply it afterwards. It's okay. The only thing I don't like about this is, this is almost like a cloth line stuff and I think in a boat it would get wet and I don't know, I, I kind of avoid it if I can. Um, rather use the stuff that you slide on beforehand. So anyways, regardless, it just makes a neater job. You know, if you're gonna run a big length of it somewhere, you can use the same as this, the same thing. If you remember to put your shrink wrap on first, before you put your connectors all together, obviously you can use, uh, you know, something like this, slide the shrink wrap over and seal it all up and make some extra job. Now, back to tooling. This is where things start to get crazy expensive. Like I was saying, I have probably $3,000 worth of crimpers. There's that toolbox is full of them. I didn't even, I just pulled out the general ones just to give you an idea. To do a, what I would call a nice, quality, safe, reliable job, you need one of these, which is a battery lug crimper, or this style. Honestly, this this one I've had for a while now, this was like Amazon $70. If you are gonna be crimping battery connectors, battery lugs and whatnot on, you have to have something like this. It's an investment that you have to make because it, you can't that safely do it without risk of it coming apart. These work very well too. Anyways, I would say if you're going to do the job, you need a pair of these. You're gonna need a Delphi crimper of some sort, three different styles. They're all relatively the same, these ones. I just have a few different pair. Sometimes the, the, the shape inside is a little bit different. We get a bit specific here with some of the stuff that we do. You don't need to, so I would say one pair of those. A decent little pair of strippers. These are a little blue point pair. I really like these, they're nice and small, they're sharp, they're nice for working up underneath the dash. And these are awesome. These are just a pair of channel lock, generic. You buy these, these are an insulated or non-insulated crimper. You buy these at any Canadian tire store or Lowe's or whatever. What I did with these, um, actually these, these are also like a, like a side cutter on the end, but I found it got in the way for the crimping. I solely use them for crimping, so I just went and cut that off and ground it off, and they're nice and they're fairly nice and thin. They work really, really good. If you do have to use these closed barrel crimpers, they actually work quite nice for those. Um, and if you have to use like a, um, sometimes you'll struggle with a little bit bigger ring terminal. Um, with a Delphi style crimper, unless you have a big set like these, 
which again, I wouldn't expect you to buy. Uh, these work fabulous. These work fabulous for that. They crimp nice. They don't, they're not the most attractive looking crimp when they're done. Um, th th that's something else I want to, I want to touch base on here just real quickly. Instagram has made wiring a fashion show. And I can dig it. I think it's super cool. I love going on and looking at the top guys in the States, Devin Vanderhoof and all these different guys that are the top automotive motorsports wires. I mean, the guys, their stuff is artwork far, far better than I could ever do. Um, and that's awesome. They make it super, super nice. But it doesn't mean as a hobbyist that you can't do a good, reliable job at home that's safe, that looks nice. So don't, don't, don't compare your shit to the stuff you're seeing on Instagram and saying, oh, that's shit. Because I'll tell you something, I've seen some really nice wiring jobs that look fantastic and fucking use shitty tools and the connectors fall apart and it's unreliable as hell. So I would rather see you buy a few good tools, make some good crimps, and make it look as nice as you can. Again, these crimpers, they're not stylish, they're not the trend like all of this shit is. They don't make the sharpest looking crimp, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I would crimp that down um, adhesive line shrink wrap it and challenge anyone to pull that connection apart when it was done. So anyways, get yourself a set of these. Basically, heat gun, set of lug crimps, Delphi's, strippers, set of these, any wiring project on the planet for the most part, obviously some scissors, and you're probably total $200 in tools, maybe 250 you know, that's gonna save, all, if you're doing it yourself, you're saving the cost of paying someone to do it. So buy a few tools and then you've got them for projects down the road. Do you need to get into DMC crimpers and stuff? Maybe one day. I, I actually fucking hate using these. They're like, like uh, they, they make a smaller set, which I really need to get because I mean, they're, like, they're awkward to use, but they're so big. And anyways, um, anyways but they, 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 do, they do their job. They're, they're important to, to get the proper, proper crush, but. Long and short, buy the best connectors and wire that you can. Invest in at least this minimal amount of tools, lots of zip ties, lots of shrink wrap. Go at it, do the best job you can. The, the, the long and short is, is that you're gonna know. If you can draw, if you have a basic understanding of electronics, you can drop a schematic, you know what kind of loads need to go across the connectors, that sort of thing, go at it. Use lots of zip ties. Here's a little trick too, buy thousands of zip ties because when I wire a boat, I'm, sometimes you, you'll see my pictures and stuff maybe looks nice and neat. I might put 200 zip ties in that I end up cutting back off because I'll use them to hold something in place until I get it to where I want it and that sort of thing. So don't be afraid to do that. Anyways, um, dive in, buy a few tools, buy the best product that you can, go at it, ask questions. Guys, reach out to me, reach out to others. There's lots of guys out there that can help you. Don't be afraid to feel like maybe you're not, you're, you know, your quality might not be up to what the top Instagram posts are and stuff. Um, I, by far, I don't think that I'm anywhere near one of the best there is. And I, and I can tell you that some of my earlier projects I'm not very fond of, I'm pretty embarrassed about when I go back and I look at them now. I say, oh man, fucking, I even see cars, guys that still own cars that I did 10 years ago, and I look at them and I go, oh, what was I thinking? But I didn't know, and I had to learn, and the main thing was I just tried to make sure that my crimps were reliable, that I used the proper gauge of wire, that I had a basic understanding of the circuit and what was gonna be passing through it, so it was not gonna melt the car down, fuse and relay your system. And other than that, it's not that hard. So, anyways, I hope that sort of gives you guys a little basic understanding of, of the different connectors, the different wire, the different tools. I mean, I could do a 10 part series on this. I'm not going to, I just kind of wanted to break down the basics. So anyways, I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, reach out to me by all means. I'll be more than happy to advise you either way on some of the products I use and, um, and that sort of thing. So anyways, enjoy. Thank you.